Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you on this, the twelfth day of the month of Rabi al Thani of the year 1444, here in my Caribbean island of Trinidad with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we, are, we address a difficult subject, calling Iran. We had calling Britain, we had calling Pakistan, and now they, we record calling Iran. And we are not going to be able to please everybody. I don't, I don't ever speak to please people. No. <laughs> I, I, try, I try at all times to speak in accordance with absolute truth in the Quran, which is pleasing to the Lord God, to Allah Most High. And if people are pleased with well, Alhamdulillah, and if they're not pleased, well, what can I do about that? Iran is going through a very difficult period this time because the, the social police, I think they were called, uh, arrested a young woman, a Kurdish woman, whose hijab was not properly properly fixed on her head. And while she was in custody, uh, she died. And once that event took place, the enemies of Iran and the enemies of Islam went to work. There are some who are going to be annoyed with me for saying these words, but this is absolute truth, whether you like it or whether you don't. The enemies of Islam, the enemies of Iran, then saw an opportunity and they went to work. They went to work full time in trying to exploit this opportunity to destabilize Iran and to try to bring about the downfall of the government of Iran to replace well, a government which is following the sacred part and replace it with another one which is following the secular part like the Shah of Iran before the Islamic Revolution. Well then, what comments do I have to make on this subject? First of all, yes indeed, Allah and His Messenger have ordained, have ordered that a woman should cover her head that a woman should not cover her head in a part-time way. You know, you, you have the hijab somewhere in the center of the head. Benazir <laughs> Bhutto style. No, no. The way our women dress. You look, you go on the streets and you see the way our women are dressed in hijab. Allah has ordained. Our Prophet has said, he said it to the sister of his wife, Aisha, Radiallahu ta'ala and her, her name was Asma. Listen to the words. You may not like it, but listen to it. And try to teach that heart of yours to submit to the word of the Prophet Islam. Asma had come before the Prophet Islam wearing a dress which was somewhat transparent, meaning you could see through the cloth. And he turned his face away and he said to her, gently, not harshly, Asma, when a girl reaches the age of puberty, nothing must be seen of her body except, and he pointed to the face and he pointed to the hands. And if the hands were free to be seen, by implication includes the feet. If your hands are free to be seen and your face can also be seen, then by implications, your feet can also be seen. Is it possible? Am I allowed to think? Oh, yes. We live in a world where people don't think anymore. And so a woman's head must be covered. However, Allah also says in the Quran, La ikraha fid deen. 
there is no compulsion in religion. He says in the Quran, Al Hakumi Rabbikum Faman Sha'afa Yu'min Waman Sha'afa Yakfur. The truth is from your Lord. Whosoever wishes is free to accept it, and whoever wishes is free to reject it. And so we do not force any woman to cover her head. No. What we do is we try to gently persuade her, teach her. And if our gentle persuasion and our teaching and our exhortation is not successful, we show patience. But she will pay a price, for example. You wouldn't marry her. No, you won't marry her. She will face social restrictions if she does not want to conform. But you will not force her to cover her head. No. When, however, someone refuses to cover her head, not just as an act of defiance to the guidance which has come from the Lord God, but more than that, more dangerous than that, you're doing this on behalf of the enemy. You're dancing to the tune played by the enemy. The enemy wants to destabilize the state. The state has the right to act forcefully to stop what you are doing. That's right. And so Iran has the right because the Western world is doing everything they can possibly do to destroy Iran. If you don't like Iran, leave Iran and go where you want. Go back to the United States. Go somewhere else. But do not participate in an effort to bring about regime change in Iran because if you do that and we respond to you with power, you deserve it. You deserve it. That's right. You deserve it. And so we thank Allah that Iran is surviving and they've not succeeded in bringing about regime change in Iran. But that does not change my view that there has to be a different way of dealing with the subject. You have to discriminate between those women who simply don't want to obey the law of covering the head and those women who are dancing to the tune of the enemy and wants to bring down the government. These who simply don't want to obey the law, you have to deal with them differently. You deal with them gently. You give them the freedom. You can choose to wear, you can choose not to be wear. But then we will try to teach you, we we'll try to sp speak to you gently. Your heart might be clean. Your heart is in the right place. But events may have taken place in your life which has caused you to turn away from the hijab. And we're not going to throw you away because of that. We're going to wait gently, we'll teach, we'll show compassion, we'll show wisdom, and we'll show patience with you until eventually one day, inshallah, you agree and you turn and you cover your head as Allah and His Messenger has obeyed. These people, we deal with them gently and nicely. But these who want to dance to the tune of the enemy and to destabilize the state, you have the right to deal with them with all the force that you need to deal with them to eliminate that threat from the state. And this is all I have to say on calling Iran. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.